Hey there. So, so I'm sitting this morning and I'm thinking, you know, you ever, <laughs> you ever noticed the level of sometimes the silly things that you do or say, but particularly do when you're doing it for somebody that, that you like, when you're like falling in love or that sort of thing, the silly nitty gritty things that you start doing. And that you just don't care. You couldn't care less what everybody else thinks. There's probably been moments of, stop it, people are watching. Do you stop? No. I, I, I can think of many a times in my past where I didn't. And, and generally speaking, you know, I'm a, I'm a person quite like that. Um, I've been that a long time in my life, but life worked very hard to get rid of it. It's a silly, undignified, foolish looking behavior um, but through God's grace he restored it and healed it healed the broken stuff back and slowly but surely I'm becoming that guy again um, well not be I can't say again it's a, there's definitely a new version and a new form because the God doesn't bring back the old stuff he leaves it there so it's a new a new behavior that gets formed and and I love it because it's built on that sort of behavior for me is built on God's love and my belief in him you know i just said to somebody yesterday again of how often i've heard in my life of how unrealistic i am when it comes to whatever and the, and my first response to everybody like that is but i don't serve a realistic god the bible says you know god the god who can do to him who can do exceedingly abundantly above all we can think or imagine God can do more than you can think, more than you can ask, more than you can imagine. So surely he's not a realistic God, if you know what I'm saying. So, so what am I on about this morning? It, it's simple. To pursue God irrelevant of how it makes you look. To pursue God irrelevant of what people around you are going to say or think. If it's that easy to look foolish and silly for somebody that you just like, another body on this planet... How, easy, how much easier shouldn't it be to look foolish for Jesus? That's that's something that still doesn't make sense to me. I'm actually sitting here in this moment now that we prepare this. I'm thinking of where certain conversations that I've had in and around my church. And I've seen some stares because of my behavior, because of I'm hunting on there. And I don't care. And when I do think about that, though, is, you know, if I see these people and I see those looks, is it's people that still need to learn to die to themselves because it's all about God and it should never be about us. You know, people go less of me and more of him. I've said it's, I've said this before, where I'm working towards a space where it's none of me and all of him. Because if you say less of me, it still insinuates to me that you are planning that there should be some of you left. And there shouldn't. Because if you completely, completely give yourself over to the Lord, you're going to have all your hopes and dreams still. because you. But you're going to live it in such a beautiful, godly fashion that, oh man, I don't even, I can't even explain it yet. Because I'm not quite there yet. I'm still getting there myself. But the reason I'm hunting on about this this morning is that, that foolish, undignified, silly looking behavior for, for the Lord brings me back, get, got me thinking about Noah again this morning, where the Bible says Noah had an unwavering faith before the Lord. In Genesis 6, it says, in, in verse 8, it says, but Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. Other version says favor, because grace means unmerited favor, undeserved favor that we receive from the, from the Lord. Favor is upon your life, my friend. I need, you to, I need to tell you this this morning. You need to hear this, that favor is upon your life. Whether you're sitting there right now, believing it or not, God, oh, you have God's grace, man. Oh, his favor is upon your life. Verse 9, it says, but Noah was just a man. And then it says, but Noah walked with God. That's an important thing of yours, that Noah walked with God. Verse 18, you know, so God starts instructing Noah. He tells him, this is what we're going to do. You're going to build me an ark, this long, this wide, this big. He gave, he gave him all the specifications, so many rooms, so many levels. This is what must go there, and this and that, and the big door, and this is how high, and this is the angle of the roof, and, and all these things. God gave him very specific instructions. 
And nowhere did I read, and I checked it again this morning, nowhere can I read that Noah asked God anything about this. He didn't go, yes, but God, why? Why? Why must I build an ark over here? God told him exactly what he was going to do. He says, I'm going to, I said, and you build you an ark for you and your family and all and two kinds of all the animals that I'm going to send you, male and females, and you must get food for enough food. I don't, I don't think I actually say, I think it says how long that God told him how long they might be in the ark, but he said get enough food. And, and that was it. And I didn't see anywhere where he said why. And God said, I'm going to make it rain. Now, up until this point, uh, there's been debates and whatever, but that's irrelevant. Up to this point, the few verses that I found, never, nowhere it really states that it rained f with water falling from the sky. It talks about mist coming out of the earth that watered the earth. It doesn't matter though. But can you imagine, let's say for, for this argument that it had never rained before. Never. And yet here, some God, God come tells this guy, do build me this thing. I'm going to make it rain. People are going to drown. It's going to be just you. You found favor in me. What are you going to do? And it says Noah did. The, the, I think the New King James actually says, no, but Noah moved with godly fear for his family. For his family's sake, I think. So, you know, and but verse 22, uh, well, in verse 18, God comes to Noah, to Noah in, in that same space and he says, but I will establish my covenant with you. And then in verse 22, it says, thus Noah did, according to all that God commanded him. So he did. That's it. No questions. I don't see questions here. Noah did. <clears throat> he looked probably looked foolish because he built, for years and years and years, he built on that ark. Can you imagine all the comments and things that had to come around? So my point is to go out and, and not, not be silly on purpose. You, you look silly serving God anyway. The Bible tells us we'll look strange and weird to the world. But not to be purposeful. Be diligent and be intent. Have, have intent with your behavior, with your pursuit of God. Follow God. And I've, I don't know exactly how to say this right now, but it's, it's not to do things to be seen. It's to do things that God tells you. You'll be seen anyway. Because you're going to do it different to the world. Because we are different to the world. It, it, the, the main point is that it shouldn't matter. Other people doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what other people think or say in the end of the day. Me, I'm the guy that does, I go look weird on purpose. Because if I can look foolish for somebody, then I, man, I want to, one of my biggest dreams is to be the most foolish, undignified looking dude that serves Jesus the world has ever seen. <laughs> and I don't know if I'm getting anywhere with that yet, but praise God, I will. I will do exactly what he tells me whenever he tells me. And I'm excited yet feared at the same time because I know he's taking me with regards to a bit of chatting and speaking and that sort of things. And I'm, I'm excited and, and scared at the same time of knowing the things he's going to make me do on a stage for, in front of people, stuff like that, you know. So, <laughs> But, you know, do I care what other people think or say? Do I care what even other believers think or say? No, I have absolutely, I don't care. I, they, it's not my business what they think. It's not my business what they say. My business is what God says, what God thinks of me. And that, that means if they do give you funny looks and stares, it means there's too, still too much of them there anyway in the first place. But I put it simply this morning, you've got to keep your eyes on the task God gave you and the things that you need to do for that. That's it. Nothing else. That's all that you're concerned about. You know, why are you there in the first place? You're there to serve God. You're not there to serve people. But we serve people in the end of the day. But the main point is, is it's for God. It's for Jesus. And nothing beats that feeling or, you know, that thing of, well done, I'm proud of you, my son. And I can feel it when the Lord tells me that. Nothing beats that. There are very few things that can beat that. And my name doesn't matter anyway. You know, Noah followed God's commands. Can you imagine what was said to him? And he just did what God commanded him. I'm trying to do just as God commands me. And I hope you will start doing just as God commands you.